the morning uh, of May 9th, I was riding my bike and I have a very specific route I take. And as I did, and I made that turn, I noticed the, the engine was out there and the scene tape was up. And, and out of curiosity, I kind of took a peek as I passed through and I noticed it looked like Richard. And that's when it hit me and I was, I, I, I couldn't believe it at first. Yeah, we, we all recognized him right away and, and uh, called, called for, you know, the Aventura Police Department showed up and, you know, you could tell he had been struck by a car. When I, when I responded on the scene, I met the officers that were already here. And one of them said, oh, the little guy that's always around, he got hit by a car. And when I walked up, I recognized his, I knew his first name, I never knew his last name. I remember um, it was very early in the morning. Um, I got the call that we had a uh, fatality. It was a pedestrian versus a vehicle. And they told me it was, uh, you know, Richard. And I said, w w which Richard? And I said, the, the, the little Vietnam vet. And it, right there, I, I almost, you know, I dropped my phone because, you know, I knew him. This is the first time where, where I conducted an investigation where I actually knew the victim. We started reviewing surveillance video to determine what kind of car may have struck him. And we were starting to compare the, uh, the debris that we had found. But we initially felt it was probably someone that was a DUI or impaired from some of them. According to the official police report, the subject, Ms. Sokolov, is an employee of the Miami-Dade Police Department and was working at that time as a stenographer for their homicide unit. Ms. Sokolov stated that although she normally works at the office till 11 p.m., that night she worked late and left at approximately 11.50 p.m. After hitting Richard, she then drives home several blocks away and exits her car. She paces up and back, looking at the damage on the exterior of the vehicle. She then states that she decided to walk back to the scene that night to try to see if she could locate what she hit. About an hour later, she returns home and calls her insurance company. Thank you for calling Kemper Specialty Claims. This is Amber speaking. How may I help you? Uh, good evening, Amber. My name is Leslie Sokolov, and um, I was coming home from work tonight, and something hit my car, and uh, I don't know what hit it, but there's damage to my car. Have you notified any authorities at this point? Have you contacted police? Uh, no, I hadn't because there was uh, nothing that was visible that could have hit my vehicle. Okay. I thought that it was a um, palm frond that hit my car, but I don't know, not with the, the damage that I have. I don't know. Uh, at the time that it happened, I didn't see another vehicle, but when I got home and I parked my car, I, I walked the route that I had driven and I didn't see anything other than um, some other vehicles that were in a, in a separate incident. During the course of our investigation, we determined that Richard was walking north, probably just outside of the crosswalk. He was walking from the public side towards Walgreens across 199th Street. He was struck with the, uh, the front left fender of the vehicle and causing him to, uh, he was walking facing northbound, the car was heading eastbound, so it struck him on his left side and towards his back. When he went back from the impact, he hit his head on the, uh, the edge of the windshield. As she's walking across, right about that line is where he was struck, but outside the crosswalk to the right of it. Just out of curiosity, if she's coming from straight, wouldn't she have clear vision of whatever is in front of her if Richard was crossing the street? Absolutely. There's a, there's no obstructions in the roadway that would have obstructed her view. Uh, there, there are street lights here. There's a street light right here. This is a, this is a well-lit intersection, in my opinion. It's not pitch black. It's not dark. There's street lights. There's traffic signals. There's businesses in the area with lights on at night. Uh, I, I feel that she should have seen him had she been cognizant of what was in front of her. You know, based on seeing Richard walk, he did, you know, it's not like he darted out into traffic. He, he wasn't a, a runner. Richard didn't run into traffic. 
He walked at a, a slower than normal walking pace. So it would have taken him several seconds for him to cross the roadway from where we're standing across the road. And uh, she should have seen him. In your experience with uh, these type of accidents, is it normal not to brake? Generally, when, when you're in a crash or, or there's some sort of loud noise or impact with your car, a, a lot of times the person's first reaction is to jam on your brakes. And there, to us, there was no evidence of that because there's no skid marks or no, uh, no evidence of any braking. I mean, if you hit a, a, a bug that hits your windshield at, that, you know, at, at 35, 40 miles an hour, just a bug that big, you can hear it. A 100-pound person, it's going to be multiplied by that much <laughs> amount. I mean, uh, you're, you're going to have extensive damage. You're going to have blood. You're going to have tissue. You're going to have hair all over the front of that car. The, the damage on the car was definitely noticeable and significant. And uh, the person driving knew they were in some sort of crash. Uh, she, uh, she claimed that she just didn't know she hit a person. When I saw him, he was kind of halfway in the bushes, halfway out. You know, there was, it was definitely obvious. As soon as you walked up to the bushes, you could see, I mean, the bushes are, are no more than, you know, 24, 30 inches tall. So, so how far away do you think you would have to be to be able to see him? If you were 10 feet away, would you see him? Yeah, for sure. It's a little bit out of the ordinary with that amount of damage, not to stop, call the police, say, hey. We found, we found that pretty telling that she didn't notify the police, but she, she bothered to call her insurance company to, to claim the damage on her vehicle. The next morning at about 9 a.m., she decided to again walk back to the scene to see if she could locate what she hit. Despite seeing the street blocked off by the police, despite seeing a yellow blanket used to cover Flaherty's body, and despite being told by a bystander that there was a hit and run, Ms. Sokoloff still, for her own reasons, decides not to notify the police who are standing right there on scene. Once at the Miami-Dade Police Department, she notifies the supervisor and tells him that she believes she might have been involved in a hit and run. At approximately 1.30 p.m., a Miami-Dade police sergeant notifies the Aventura Police Department that one of his employees might have been involved in a traffic homicide. And then I get a phone call saying that from the detective saying that I have, I may have your driver and I may have your vehicle. And I, I sprinted over to uh, the Miami-Dade Police Department headquarters. So I met with the detective, he, he met me outside. I talked to him, he, he told me the, that, he, that he showed me the vehicle that may have hit Richard. Um, he said that the driver's inside, just beside herself with, with remorse. So I went inside and, and I spoke to her and she, she was almost destroyed. She, she couldn't keep it to herself. I basically took her, her statements down, um, asked her more questions, um, finished the interview, and then I gathered all my information and went back to my sergeant. Um, we, we spoke about it, we talked about it, uh, we put everything in a packet, I typed everything up. That's when we started calling and talking with the state attorney's office. They just felt that they gave her the benefit of the doubt that she just didn't know what she hit. And I was specifically told do not arrest the driver. We have a lot of DUI activity out there, right? And if you did hit somebody and you know you've been drinking, are you gonna stop? Now, am I saying this woman was drinking? No, I don't know nothing about that, but I do know that uh, it's a problem in South Florida. We have a major problem and there's really nothing to be done about it. It's just happenstance if you're unfortunate enough to be in the wrong place at the wrong time. And unfortunately, Richard was.